Hello everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm Jason Aiken. In this week's episode, I will be discussing Marooned Under the Sea by Paul Ernst. The story originally appeared in the September 1930 issue of Astounding Stories of Super Science. This magazine title was later shortened to Astounding Stories. It was the cover story this month, with a cover painted by H. W. Wesolowski, or Wesso for short. Paul Ernst is best known today for writing The Avenger as Kenneth Robeson, but he was writing pulps long before Richard Henry Benson. This is one of his earlier stories. At the time of publication, Ernst was around 31 years old. This was a very enjoyable story that I am glad I took the time to read. The story is set in the late 1920s, early 1930s. This starts out as a science fiction story with Professor George Berry, a world-famous zoologist, Stanley Brown, a noted big-game hunter and semi-retired owner of the Brown Glassworks Company, along with the main character, young red-headed Martin Gray. The three of these men set off on an expedition to explore a deep South Sea trench in a glass sphere apparatus of the professor's design. Ernst does a good job of describing the equipment they are using, with going, without going too far with the science behind it. He has to put some descriptions in here, as this is a science fiction magazine, but he doesn't go nuts with the technical details. The three are lowered into the trench by a yacht. The yacht stays fastened to the glass sphere by a cable. Within the glass sphere, deep beneath the sea, the three discover various unknown aquatic life while on the first leg of their journey. Eventually, things take a turn for the worse, and a hurricane above causes the yacht and glass sphere to separate. With very little hope for rescue, the three believe they will die on the ocean floor. They might as well be on another planet at this point. However, as luck would have it, they are rescued by a race of humans. These humans live in hollow caverns beneath the sea. Now this is where the story becomes more of a lost race adventure rather than pure science fiction. There are still plenty of science fiction elements, but this feels more like an Edgar Rice Burroughs story, which isn't a bad thing, rather than an exploration adventure. The three manage to learn the language of these people and become a part of their society. The city is named Zybor, and the Zyborians all appear to be in peak physical condition, and they also have the power of telepathy. They use their telepathy to communicate with their fish-human hybrid pets that can swim in the ocean. These hybrids bring the Zyborians food via the tunnel leading into their city. I won't go into any more details, but needless to say, not all is well in paradise. The Zyborians have an enemy, and the enemy is at the gate. It's up to these three to unite the Zyborians against the invading force, who wants Zyboria for itself. For fans of The Avenger, I think you will enjoy seeing Ernst write in a different genre. It's a little different than The Avenger stories, but it's still Ernst. I also think this, is, this story is a good example of how to successfully transition 
from one genre of science fiction to another. Ernst really doesn't miss a beat, and it's a very seamless transition. The story is available in numerous places online for free. I will put links in the show notes to Project Gutenberg, where you can get the ebook in various formats, as well as LibriVox.org, where the entire 1930 issue of Astounding Stories of Super Science has been made into an audiobook. I was able to look ahead to other issues of Astounding and read the letters column in an effort to look for feedback on this story. From those future letter columns, this, the feedback on this story was universally positive, with many saying it was the best in this issue, which makes sense given it was the cover story, um, so it would appear the editor also thought very highly of it as well. In some of these future letter columns, there was one reader who was a little down on the science behind the glass sphere, but he said he liked the story itself. I found all of the positive sentiments really still hold up to this day. I mean, this story was published 80 plus years ago, and it didn't miss a beat reading it today. I really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I advise you to give it a try. I think you'll like it too, especially fans of The Avenger, Edgar Rice Burroughs, or people that like Lost Race Tales in general. And Ernst is a really good writer. Um, I've yet to read a story of his that I haven't liked. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Thanks for watching. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at pulpcrazy on Twitter. And facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Until next time.